in hot is presented by botano the game starts now here are your hosts brent wallace jason york and bobby ryan Hey, everybody. Welcome to the show. I'm Brent Wallace alongside Jason York and Bobby Ryan, who apparently has bought all of the Grill Guide cookies in Nashville. So if you're out, send him a note uh, <laughs> and you can fire it off the nasty messages. How many boxes did you buy? It was, it was $79 worth. It was a lot. <laughs> hey, thin mints, thin mints, I, yeah. thin mints, thin mints yeah. are my favorite. Hey, those are the go -to. You throw those in the freezer. Yeah, Thin Mints in the freezer, and then they got those new ones. Oh, man, s'mores cookies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I had to, I literally just took the entire big box and put it up out of out of sight, out of mind for a little bit here until, until we get the weight checked in. I got to weigh, weigh in with Schwartzy. <laughs> <laughs> I'll talk and get the calipers out for you on Monday. Um, this show is always brought to you by Botano. Go to botano.ca. Of course, it's Super Bowl weekend coming up. Uh, they will have everything you could possibly need and more. We'll talk about that in a sec when we have uh, Rash come on the show. Uh, he's down at the Super Bowl. Lots of weird things to bet on, including like what's the color of Rihanna's hair going to be. Um, I'll let Bobby start with that one. Uh, B Botano, download the app. Go to botano.ca. The game starts now. Um, and before we get into bringing on a Rash, uh, I wanted to ask you guys, and I meant to bring this up in the last show, and I forget. I need to write stuff down. Um, mm -hmm. The ratings are down in the NHL like 22%, and people are calling it boring. So, uh, and I will admit, like, there's not a lot of storylines, it appears, this year. I, the lack of trades, the Bo Horvat finally, but, like, Connor McDavid's lighting it up as usual. There just, there seems to be a lack of oomph or storylines. Um, do you guys find it the same? And as ex-players, do you really care? Bobby? No, don't really care. <laughs> um, I, I would, <laughs> but, if, <laughs> but I do agree with you. Um that there has not been a ton of i don't want to say drama but storylines for sure there hasn't been a ton of um uh build up especially here. like i'm in the us right so it's a little different and and, and there's no there's no market like i'm in nashville i know it's a southern state but it, um city but there's no build up there's nothing about the preds anywhere you never you just never know um you know they could they could be playing tomorrow night and for all i know um i just happen to scroll past it on the television so the the marketing is just um flawed i guess would be the word mm -hmm. are we uh that's those are the ratings in in the u.s so not in canada yeah correct yeah yeah so correct. i'm i'm not i'm not surprised no nobody yeah. cares in the states <laughs> you got your hockey hotbeds like you got detroit but you have to make Chicago. them care yeah good luck americans are creatures of habit they like to know when things are on TV and they have their routines, they like to tailgate, they like to be in yeah. parking lots. And and hockey blew it a long time ago when they made the schedule so long. And Americans have no idea when the games are. Are they Thursday? Are they Tuesday? It's, it's like the NFL yeah. works. It's like that restaurant. I always put everything back to restaurants. It's really hard to get in because you only have 16 games. So each game is super important it's super built up you talk about it all week and that's why they make so much money on tv it's it's the nhl will never do that because we got too many games yeah. we got too many games we'll see well why does base, baseball work well because because it's america's pastime um that's why baseball can get away with having so many games and you charge less but it's just there's just certain places in the states it's never gonna work and certain places it will grow a little bit and and, and obviously too it's it's poorly marketed but it's uh it's 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 tough like there's just it's not that they're making mistakes it's it, it is it is the way it is and i'm not surprised and to bobby's point if if you're in nashville it's there's, there's one guy covering the team nobody's talking about it but um, no idea yeah, it's it's, yeah. it's no yeah it's on the back page wow. of the sports and you gotta win the other you thing too, you gotta win cranky today no so, here's well, I'll, I'll tell you i'll tell you another yeah, thing on. i'll tell you another let me tell you one other thing one other dirty little secret all right a lot of guy, a lot of guys in the NHL that played the game, don't really like hockey. They were just really good at it. So, <laughs> that could be the same for any. Bobby's, sport. Bobby's, Bobby's yeah. laughing because it's true. But, there's, but that could be the same for there's football, no... basketball. If you pay me enough money, people, will, yeah, like that could be any sport. Um, you said yeah, but just... might go back to the restaurant analogy, but then you went on to football, so you didn't actually explain the restaurant analogy. Okay, people like to go somewhere where it's hard to get in, 
where there's a demand. There's a demand for NFL football because there's not a lot yeah. of it. It's like you want to get into that yeah. restaurant that everyone wants to get into. It's because everybody wants to get in there. Less is more. Less is better. But the problem is hockey can never go back because it's all about gate and revenue. But, but now they're starting to get exactly, more sponsors. Yeah. You got it's just it, it's 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 unfortunate. But the recipe for football is so perfect in the states. How they do it, how they brand it, how they build it up every week. It's it's ingenious. Like if you go watch an NFL game, I think it's boring. It's totally boring. It's awful. But if you watch it, it's awful. It's it's hockey blows it out of the water, but their television production blows the NHL out of the water, and that's that's why it's awesome. Sure. And don't forget the the betting. But hey, we've got betting now on hockey, and and that's only going to help the brand. For sure. Uh, we'll get back that's, to more uh, NHL chat in a moment, uh, but. Arash doesn't want to sit around and listen to you talk all day long. I know. And by Sorry, the way, Arash. it's funny. With the, it's the funny part is uh, the NFL doesn't have to sell a single ticket to turn a profit, uh, but yet exactly it's a, exactly. It's a sellout every weekend. It's wild. And the game's um, and the game's all right, terrible. Before we get to Arash, it, yeah, it's. I mean, yeah, okay. Uh, well, by the way, let's just get on to Arash. But before we do that, uh, Renfrew Pro, one of our proud sponsors, uh, go to RenfrewPro.com. Uh, they are the industry standard when it comes to hockey tape. Renfrew Pro continuously evolves its products to ensure that every roll of hockey tape optimizes performance regardless of the type of hockey tape you use. Uh, by the way, on Friday, tomorrow, they're always it's free tape Friday. Uh, go to Instagram at Renfrew Pro and uh, enter those contests, by the way. Uh, Renfrew Pro, the one with the green core. Feel the game with RenfrewPro.com. Also by BEI, Monster Excavating Inc. Um, they are looking to hire, by the way, right now a project coordinator. Uh, but also you can use them for equipment rentals, aggregate and topsoil sales. Give them a call. Also, they're looking to hire for other uh, positions as well. BonnetshireExcavating.com, 613-432-1120. Bonnetshire Excavating, helping to shape the Ottawa Valley. Now, uh, we bring in a guy that I've known longer than both of you two, who's down at the football. Yeah. He's just in the mix of it all. He's one of like the 75,000 journalists covering this oh. thing. Arashma, Danny, I haven't seen you in so long. It's nice to see you, oh. my friend. Nice to see you, Brent. Even though I know you're lying, the last time I saw Bobby in these parts, the last time I saw Bobby in these parts, he was signing autographs for some kids at the old Glendale Arena oh. on the walk back to the hotel. And the last time yep. I worked with York in these parts, I nearly missed my flight the next morning. So you some memories <laughs> being here in Arizona. We had a good night. Yeah. Hey, we had a good night in Nashville, didn't we, to Rash? That was a yes, good we night. Did. Yes. <laughs> Help, hey, hey! First of all, guys, how about this? You got, we got to give Arash some props here. Well, like you were in the business for a long time, and I don't want to blow smoke up your ass here, but is there a better chameleon in the business than Arash Madani? You get a finals, you get a Super Bowl, you get the World Series. Just stick Arash in there, and it's like he, it, he's like an expert. All of a sudden, he knows everything that's going on, and uh, it, it's unbelievable, Arash, the way you're able to pull it off, man. You, you've got everybody fooled, don't you? I really do. No, I fooled them again this this week too. And I appreciate that. I, I was listening to the the previous part of the conversation. I just like I when it comes to marketing the NHL, like. The one thing that I find so fascinating is how big the NBA continues to be and become. Mm -hmm. And you play the same number of games as the NHL. And one thing, you know, coming into this Super Bowl, before we get into the basketball thing, Kansas City played Cincy in the AFC Championship game. And the ratings went up 11%. And those are two of the smallest markets in America, period. Like Kansas City, Missouri, and Cincinnati, Ohio but the star power of Burrow and Mahomes. Then you look at the NBA and it's almost as if everybody knows these dudes by their first name, Steph, yeah. Kyrie, LeBron, KD, oh, KD's not his first name, Clay, uh, Giannis. And they really show off their personality, uh, Kawhi. Well, he doesn't do that, but you know who they are <laughs> and their brands become so big. And I just find culturally hockey, mm -hmm. it's don't say anything. Don't be out there. Don't don't ruffle feathers. Don't rock the boat. Stay quiet. That that doesn't work in a social media viral society. And which is why even with games on ESPN and TNT now ratings are down 22%. 
Yep. Well, hey, the most the one of the guys that's getting the most popular right now is is Biz because <laughs> he's the guy that yeah. has personality because he knows how right. to be, like think think about it like there's a guy that knows how to pimp himself out just by having a personality right and, and, and look how popular he's gotten with hockey. But I'm with you, Rash. The other thing too, and this with the basketball guys, I know we're going. On, I know we're supposed to talk about the NFL, but the fact with basketball players, you can see their face. You can see them. They're right there. You can almost reach out and touch them. The thing with hockey, with the helmets, the visors, it's 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 to me, it's as a fan, it would be a lot tougher to relate to the guys because you just you never really see the person. And you're right, guys are just brought up not to not to pump their own tires, not to cause ripples, and and just uh, tow the company it line. Hey, cause, Why not cause yeah. a feud? Cause some kind of controversy. Put yourself out there. I, I think, I think, I think, Arash, it's because in a hockey practice, if you're a teammate that is putting himself above the team, you might get beat up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, it, yeah, it's happened before, man. You can ask Bob. And you're, like, cer- it's before. you're certainly thought of a certain way in the locker room if you do that, right? Like, like yeah, you know, really you're yeah. trying to grow a brand while, the, while, while you know, 18 other guys are pulling well, on one, one cord, you're pulling PK on another. P.K. Subban. Yeah. yeah, it's yeah. it's 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 there's just it's just there's so many. Uh, Bob, you're you're you've played a lot more recently than I have, and all I can speak to my era, it it it, it wouldn't have worked. Uh, it's a lot different now. Listen, when I played, guys were having aliases to go in hotels because they didn't want anybody knowing they were staying at the hotel. Paul Korea and and Timo Slaney, they had aliases. Now, guys announce when they come to town. <laughs> <laughs> and they're exactly. talking on social yeah. media yeah. so it's like i'm probably the wrong guy like bobby you could probably talk about it better than me but i don't know there's still uh but it's uh just to look at it this way though yorkie the nhl's top stars and i love Sidney crosby but Sidney crosby Connor yeah, mcdavid too. uh austin matt like but austin has a little bit of personality but in toronto they try to just suck it out of you as best they can <laughs> you can't they yeah. don't they don't market themselves like Connor mcdavid is dry as sand there's just nothing yeah. there. He doesn't want to get – because they're trying to protect their brand. And the, if you want guys to drive the NHL, having Connor McDavid and Sidney Crosby being vocal and out there would certainly yeah. help. I can admit now that I'm – guys would come to town on visiting teams. They would walk out of the locker room, and I wouldn't know necessarily who everybody is because you see them right. in a helmet. You don't necessarily know what they look like when they're coming out. And I that's for sure happened where I'm like, who's that yeah. guy? And somebody from the local media would, would go, well, it's I, cool. I, I would, I would, I would say this. So to the defense of some of the guys, number one, um, the media is always trying to trap you to say it because everybody wants a headline, especially now. But number two, the game is so grinding. It's so exhausting. And hockey is, it's one of the toughest sports to play, especially when you're playing a lot of minutes to, to add on the stress of going out there and putting yourself out there. Guys just don't think it's worth it. Because it's it's just a lot of added pressure that most guys, you know what, I'm already making $10 million. Why do I right. want to go out there and add more stress to my life when it's already tough enough to, to play this game? So I totally get it. Um, so that's that's my two cents, Bobby. I don't know about what you think about it. No, I agree. I mean, like, I'll, we'll just use Connor McDavid as an example because he'd be the number one guy that could 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 branch out. But why would he start anything? He's making twelve point five million dollars, you know, and you want to give him an extra six figures to get into a feud with somebody. Just makes no sense, right? He's like, I'm good. I'm gonna. I'm I'm on pace for one hundred and fifty two yeah. points this year. That's good. <laughs> like, I'm I'm not adding any fuel to anybody's fire. Uh, it's up to the league to market it, not me. Yeah, and, and yeah. when you do I mean, it, I'll... like Brad Marchand, you get hammered. Uh, oh, yeah. he gets hammered, yeah. Like yeah. Brad Marchand, yeah, they hammer him. he's a hell of a Who hockey hammers player. Him, uh, Who hammers him? Okay, here's. Well, I always see, I always see the, the social media backlash. I guess when people are writing back to him, and I'm like, good, I love it because I think like he's here for it. He, yeah. you know, he he has oh, no problem. Brad embraced it, uh, it, man. He he's all. Oh about yeah, that. I love it. Yeah, I but love it. He's probably he's probably he's, he's probably. But you know what? They also probably bring him in and tell him to not do it in Boston, right? You would you would assume that the organization is going, hey Brad, you know, stop licking people and then stop talking shit on social media. <laughs> but Brad doesn't care. He's got his money. You know what? Yeah. Have fun with it. 
Arash, it's Arash, true. I could, Arash, I could see you as a bit shit, a big shit talker if you were playing it. You'd talk a lot of trash. Right, and I wouldn't be able to back it up either, Yorkie. That would be the best part of it. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Just stir in the but, pot, eh, every game. <laughs> Arash, back to your point. We want, as in the media, somebody to say something. Then we get excited like Brad Marchand. And then we hammer yeah. that, right? Then we come down, oh, I can't believe he said that. And then the, the players just back <laughs> off. That's like, it's, it's a mess. Like we need to either accept it and enjoy it or shut the hell up, but we can't have it both ways. Okay. Have you, right. have you guys, have you guys been paying attention to what goes on on social media these days? You can't say anything or you'll be, you'll be canceled. No, like, no, you can't. like, yeah, right. Can't. So sp it's like today. Everybody is so friggin' oversensitive. If some guy says something, why bother? I don't. I don't get it. Like right. I, I, yeah. I, I do get it. I would not want to put myself in that position. The offended police will will cancel you in a second. Uh, all right, we're we're moving on. Uh, we got football yeah. to talk about. Uh, but before that, as I said, I've known Arash longer than both of you since. 1997, when I was working in Montreal, and he was at Bishop's University as the sports oh, wow. information director. If you have any questions you want to ask him about me, get it out now before we get into the yes. Super Bowl talk. I remember <laughs> in Rash. March 1998, frosted tips, Brent Wallace rolling into town, and we're like, whoa, <laughs> big time, Never had Brent is here, hey? I'll never forget <laughs> I gotta, the frosted tips. We got to see a picture of that. There's got to be a picture yeah. out there somewhere. I never. Why are you blushing? I never man? had frosted tips. Yeah, you did. Now you're just you're all frosted. <laughs> yeah. No, I, so I have good. a picture. You're all frosted. <laughs> yeah. Now I'm all frosted. Yeah. Um, I know. I never. Anyway, I just look really good, Arash. You could just admit it. It's okay. Yeah, you did. You did. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, uh, for people that don't remember, Rash actually worked in Ottawa at A Channel before it became uh, the new R. No, wait, wait, wait oh. the new RO, then A Channel, and then became yeah. CTV two. Uh, yeah, no, Arash, uh, your first TV gig in o was Ottawa. Don't correct? forget the Ottawa Renegades, Mister Wallace. Well, I do remember you being uh, the PR guy for the Ottawa Renegades, but we kind of don't talk about them in Ottawa anymore. That's a, just a right. dark hole. Sure. By the way, here, totally yeah, off Steve topic. Before we. Um, Arash, so there's a the trainer on my son's hockey team uh, talked to me all year, but he didn't actually come out and say who he was. He looked like a homeless guy. I find out a couple weeks ago it's Jason Kralt. Oh come on, former Ottawa Renegade football wow, player, Sergeant Jason Kralt. Kralt. Yeah, yeah, there you go. I'll send you a photo. All Please right. Do. Uh, so you're. <laughs> You're down in Phoenix. Uh, you're attending all the parties. You've probably met Beyonce. I, it's probably got Rihanna. I know it's going really well. Uh, we're at Media Day. And how did it go? Uh, it's a little different now. Um, before, it, like, there was, it's always a circus, but now everybody's just there with their phone looking for the 10 second sound bite. And that's what I found the biggest difference. Like, this is my first Super Bowl since COVID. I did the first. Mahomes win against uh, San Francisco. That was in Miami in February of 2020. Then all hell broke loose. And so this is our first one back. And you just notice that um, from that standpoint, that's changed a lot. The other thing that you've noticed is every single player is very measured in what they say. And I know this is contradictory to what we just talked about, but nobody wants bulletin board material this week. Like these are these are two really good teams. I think Philadelphia's got the best roster in football, and there's no need, especially with these defenses. Like, do you really need to get Chris Jones or Frank Clark pissed off? Um, I don't think so. So, I'm. Uh, it was really interesting, just you know, media night, watching how guys went about it because they wanted to enjoy themselves, they wanted to have fun, but they were they were careful about what they said. I'd like to point um, out, though, I did see the whole, there's a picture of a guy that wore a barrel. And nothing um, else. Did you run in? <laughs> did you run into <laughs> said guy with the barrel? Well, I didn't run into him. Um, I saw him and I made sure not to run into him. Um, yeah, there he is, 93.5. Uh, 
Um, uh, mm. look looks at like this. You, have yourself a day. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right guard on your Minnesota Vikings. Um, but no, I did see him. Uh, there, there are the usual kind of characters who are around. But honestly, guys, there's also fewer people than ever. Our our beloved really? industry is continuing to shrink. Yeah. I think part so, of it too is it's later at night now. It's not during the day. So it's past deadline for some yeah. people. The fact that it's Kansas City, it's not that big a market. Um, I think that weighs into it a little bit, but yeah, it is it is smaller. Um, uh, are there lots of dumb questions? Yeah. Yeah, a few. I mean, you know, but it's all for reaction. Like somebody asked Andy Reid, yeah, is this right. a must win game? Yep. Oh. Yeah, yeah and that okay. is the Super Bowl, you know, but like, you know, they're just yeah. looking for that. So there's, right. you but know, you, before it'd be you know what that is, show, Rash. things like that, but now there's yes. you know, late night TV and what it used to be either. Yes, but, but it's, you know what, sometimes, and I'm finding this, you get better reactions by the dumber the question is because they don't see it coming. And they don't know how to react to it. Yeah. Well, Nick Sirianni, the Eagles coach, somebody asked him, what's the player on your team that you would like, that you'd be okay to date your daughter? And Sirianni looked at the person <laughs> and said, my daughter's five. <laughs> That's pretty good. Yeah. 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 Um, oh. uh, next. And he goes to Dynamite. Yeah, right. Yeah. I guess, oh, so I have a question. Um, any players that you segue from that, Bobby, by the way, I was, well, I was yeah. like, how do you walk? Oh, yeah. I was like, yeah. yeah. All right. Um, but my question would be any players that we don't nest, like not the Mahomes, not the Kelsey's right. The, the big names that we all talk about any players that have really, really good, I guess, answers or, or media like ability that we wouldn't necessarily know about right out of like, you know, outside of the big guys, any, anybody that stands out to you that comes in and just carries himself a great way. Yeah, uh, that's a great question. I thought Brandon Graham was that guy for Philadelphia. Okay. Linebacker, had the strip sack on Brady. And last time the Eagles were yep. in the Super Bowl, he was a young dude there. And he talked about just how much, you know, this defense has evolved over the last five years. New scheme, new players, but still like a core nucleus of guys there with Fletcher Cox and Derek Barnett. But also that, you know, as now that he's the vet and he's got a few gray whiskers, tell him, telling the players – especially the ones here for the first time, like this is so hard to get to this point, appreciate it, understand it. But like all these lights and all this attention doesn't mean anything after tonight. And I think that's yeah. one of the biggest things about a Super Bowl is there's so much hoopla and there's so much happening. And it's, it's fully out of everything you're used to throughout the week. You're not at your team facility. You're at a resort. There are events. You can sneak away. Uh, the Scottsdale flu is a real thing. And it's like, guys, we have six months after Sunday to do whatever we want. And I thought the way Brandon Graham kind of talked about the evolution of the Eagles as a franchise, that their defense is better. He believes that they were better than they are five, than they were five years ago. And the fact to not get caught in the, the sparkle and spectacle of it all, I thought that was really cool. That's all. Hey, that's Rash, a good, I wanted that's a great to answer. Oh. I was, uh, sorry, I was just going to say the Scottsdale flu, probably somebody should have told Semin and Radulov all those years ago. <laughs> like, I was I just going to say that. that. <laughs> that's right. Eh? That's all. That's all I could think about when you said that. I was like, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay. I got to ask you, cause I want to put some money on this game, but I, yeah. I don't, so, so you're there, Patrick Mahone's you're able to see how is he moving around right now? Cause he is, it's going to be two weeks since he played his last game on a really bad high ankle sprain. I know how long a high ankle sprain takes to get better. It's like four months. How, how yeah, you're there, you're can't watching be a high ankle sprain. It can't be right. They may be calling How's it he that, moving around? It can't be that. Yeah. It can't be like no well, chance. What do you, you think? You guys what, have played what, 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 hockey games. It took, see, no way. It took if Getty Malkin over six months to come back from a high ankle sprain. Like, and he's an NHL MVP player. These guys, he could no so, matter how much tape it, no matter how much Renfrew tape they're using, he's no way. It's nice. well done. Yeah. So I talked to well done. so <laughs> I talked I, I talked to a physio guy today, a really good ex physio guy for the Maple Leafs. He was telling me 
they'll shoot it up, they'll freeze it, they'll tape it. He says you can play with the high ankle sprain, but you watch Mahomes last week. He could barely move, like barely mm-hmm. move. So I'm just wondering, because I'm trying to, I'm being very selfish here. I got to figure out if I'm going to bet Philadelphia or not, but I need to know how Mahomes is moving a rash. So you're there. We've got boots on the ground. What, what, what's your gut telling you here? What's the, uh, how's he looking? Ooh. My gut is telling me, take the over five and a half sacks. Um, oh, wow. Pays plus money. Um, you have Philadelphia that is like top three in the league in sacks for a season with 70. Um, and number two in the league this year was Kansas City with 55. That's, that's crazy what the gap is between one and two. And I just oh, wow. think that with two teams that run the RPO the way KC and Philly do, like, Jalen's not right either. Like, let's remember, Jalen Hurts had the shoulder against Chicago late in the season, and he has not looked the same since either. And if the quarterback has the ball in his hands, even if it's going to be a, an option play and he gets sacked behind the line of scrimmage, that still counts as a sack. So you have the two best, you know, probably the two best pass rushers, pass rushes, rather, in the league, the two best sack teams, and you have Mahomes who can't move around the way he likes to. And Jalen who's going to try and run the RPO as much as he can. And Yorkie, what makes Patrick Mahomes Patrick Mahomes is not being a pocket passer, even though he can sling it from the pocket. Like Mahomes is more magician than he is quarterback. And if you take some of that fairy dust away, what happens? Yes, he pulled off a couple of incredible plays against Cincinnati. Made no sense. Um, how many of those plays is he going to have in the second half after a long halftime with, with the Rihanna show right. and everything? I just don't know. <laughs> oh, that's going to be a good show, by the way. Mm. That's going to be a good show. Yeah. But it's like three Rihanna times game. the length of a regular halftime, right? So for a player, that completely changes everything for you. Yeah. See, that's yeah. how you do it, right? We are talking about the NHL doing a good halftime show. Get Rihanna in there, and you'll get uh, you'll get people paying attention in the All Star game. You don't you want to, you don't want to watch Fall Out Boy? <laughs> Jeez. I'll take the fifth. Oh I'll take the fifth on that one. <laughs> By the way, um, uh, Rash has been filing stories all week long for Sportsnet. They've actually been very good. Uh, well done. You've done some really good work. So uh, go to sportsnet.ca if you haven't already seen them and you can watch he them does, already. Well, um, he, does, he does everything. He yeah. writes stories. He's at the Super Bowl. He's at the World. This guy does everything. Yeah, it's we're not, enough of pumping his tires. Um, yeah. By the way, it sounds <laughs> like a classic with both quarterbacks who can't move. Yeah, yeah, yeah right. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so uh, here's my question then, Arash. The, I think the over-under is 51 and a half. Are you taking the over or the under? And I did look up. I want to say 10 of the last 12 or on average over the last 10 years, it's been more than 40 points, uh, nine of the 10 times, if I'm not mistaken. So I have two schools of thought on this. Early, I don't think there's going to be a feel-out period from Kansas City. I think they're just going to go for it. Um, So if you're Nick Sirianni, if you're the Eagles – and you're looking over there and you see Mahomes even hobbling and you see Kelsey and you see MVS and you see Pacheco and you see all these weapons. Don't you want to muck it up? Don't you want to just take the air out of the football? Don't you want to go Miles Sanders and Boston Scott and Kenneth Gainwell and just grind the clock and just, I mean, that offense can't score points if they're on the sideline. Um, I I just have to think that, you know, Philly's offense didn't take a lot of risks against San Francisco. And it's a different game because when Brock Purdy went down, you're like, okay, let's just not turn the ball over. But I still see this playing out as Philadelphia wanting to make sure, look, we got confidence in what we do on offense for sure. But if our quarterback isn't right throwing that deep ball to our speed guys, to Brown and Devontae, Let's make sure we don't let those guys on the field. So I, I just like if Philadelphia is on the field, they're going to want to slow things down. I, that's that's a lot of points, Wally. Um, to me, yeah. first half under. There's a lot to be said for that. Okay. What color yeah, hair I, is Rihanna going to have? 
That's that's a Jason Green. York. That's a Jason York question. Yeah. Go on. <laughs> yeah. There's, There's gonna be eight a tinge choices. Of green. Yep. What it was Green one of them? <laughs> well, yeah, at Green I think is the so it goes black, red, gray, silver, white, gray, gold, yellow, purple, green, pink, orange, and blue. Uh, orange and blue, the two lowest of the f- ten choices. Yeah. I'm going green, green. is plus 1400 Bobby. <laughs> okay. I'm, I'm going green. I'm still uh, – yeah, it's, I'm sticking with it. Is there – okay. We, we all know Arash, how good I am at this one, stuff. <laughs> yeah, no, you've really – you've been killing it. Um, is there <laughs> one of these that you're like, this is so absurd to be betting on? Well, the color of Gatorade on what the winning yeah. coach is going to get is – that always <laughs> blows me away. Like – yeah. You know, can you not can you not just go to the equipment guy and give him a pile of cash <laughs> and just say, "Hey, if you're up a bunch in the fourth quarter, get rid of all the Gatorade and let's just go water in those bins." You know, for the last little bit. <laughs> what was the number it. there? Plus just fourteen hundred. Piss, every, piss everybody off. Yeah. Just water. <laughs> right. Right. Um, that that's an absurd one. Uh, the length of the national anthem is another one. It always gets, yes. you know. Yeah. It's yeah. Al- it's always entertaining. Um, so all right, here. So let's come down. This is here. It is. So and we you can stay. We've made a. I've spent a million dollars on our graphic of lock of the day. We call it. We have made our mm. predictions, but I'm thinking maybe we can, if need be, this is it. You can change your choice if you want. So a rash. Okay. Um, I'll, I'm going to, you can be used, uh, if they want for insider information, I'll say, who do you think is going to win the Super Bowl before we make our picks? So I, I'm telling you who I think is going to win the Super Bowl. Yeah. Is that what's going yeah. on here? Yeah. You can see this so, is well rehearsed. Yes. So <laughs> Philly's got the best roster. Philly's got the better team. Philly's got the better defense. It's just so hard when you look over there and see Patrick Mahomes and, and Travis I was just Kelsey. Say, but they, they <laughs> guess what they they're, they're, guess what? There's one thing they don't have. <laughs> yeah, man. But I'm still gonna go Philly. I'm still gonna go Philly. I've just been so impressed with Jalen Hurts this season. I've been so impressed yeah. with Jalen Hurts all week and talking to some of the guys about him. Uh, and I just yeah. really, really like Philadelphia's defense. That's so he's not that hurt. So he's not that hurt then. He said he was hurt. Well, he's hurt with the shoulder. And what does the shoulder mean? It means that it's the power of the ball. It means it's the pinpoint precision of the ball. It means that if you want to go for the deep ball on the other side of the numbers, it's not going to quite be where you want it to be. Yeah. Doesn't mean that you can't throw a slant. Doesn't mean that you can't right. can't run the RPO. Right. Doesn't mean you can't throw a screen. Yeah. Doesn't mean you can't involve play action. It just may be that that, that window that was so narrow before is just kind of expanded a little bit more. And, gotcha. you know, at this level, it's not about it's not about the velocity of the football. It's about putting it where you got to put it. And I don't th- – like, it wouldn't surprise me if at the end of the season they say Jalen Hurts needs some kind of shoulder surgery. It really wouldn't. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. But you're still taking them. Okay, Alex. Get, let's get to the board. The picks are coming in here. Okay. There might be a difference, but I think – I'm thinking Bobby's not changing his mind. Uh, go to Patano.ca where the game starts now. Okay, lock of the day. Look, see, oh, hey, see, Rarash, you, but, you can't get these kind of graphics anywhere. By the no. way, Bobby, you what? Bobby, you I'm, won. I'm you clear. won. La- you won. You won last week, Bobby, because Wally Wally picked for you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. How, <laughs> how, do, how do Yorkie and and Bobby have 15 picks and Brent has one? <laughs> and he's on one. Just starting in now. <laughs> and he, yeah, he's zero one. So yeah. I'm gonna join now because uh, yeah, you've been a sleep I felt like I needed this like, What's break. going on here? <laughs> well, Arash, I run he's the ship here. The I don't have all. The, I'm I'm too yeah. busy to be doing You're everything. So I and why is so and I why is wait, why is and, and why is that head not completely gray? I'm seeing like streaks of black in that hairdo <laughs> yeah, of yours. That's, a, that's an old picture yeah. you used right there. That's Wally circa 2005. (laughs) (laughs) Update that photo. 
<laughs> it is. This is a, that's from this year. There's no way there that's always, you. I would never be anyway. That is. That's from this year. Because there's uh, one more prop. There's one to. more prop I like, guys. Yeah. And that's uh, yeah. Kenneth Gainwell over rushing yards uh, for Philadelphia. I think it's around 16 or 18 and a half yards, right. depending um, on the day of the week. But that's a dude they really use in their RPO against San Francisco. Like it was, it felt like Boston yeah. Scott to the right, Kenneth Gainwell to the left. And I was talking to the KC defensive coordinator, Steve Spagnolo, and he's, his point is in option football, your defensive guys have to do their job and they can't go freelance. They can't try and go do too much to try and help somebody out to think that, okay, I can go make this play, which is fine in the first couple of quarters. I just don't see that discipline continuing which means that there are going to be lanes opening for dudes to take off running. And Hertz will get his, and Boston Scott will get his, but I think Kenneth Gainwell is another one um, over rushing yards in this game. Yeah, I right. like that, actually. Um, okay. I, I, I'm going to listen. I'm still going to I'm, – I'm taking the Chiefs <laughs> because of Mahomes and Kelsey. I'm sorry. I, I just can't not do it. But, uh, I don't blame you. I'm going, to listen, I, I'm going to listen to you on all the prop bets, and if it doesn't go well, you're flying down and we're playing the ponies next week. <laughs> nice. <laughs> yeah. I'll show up with a chain and a lock around it, Bobby, just so it'll be the lock of the day. We'll <laughs> I love it. Perfect. Perfect. All right. Uh, uh, okay, I'm back to 500 uh, are you with this. changing your mind? <laughs> I originally, I originally took Philly, and I am not changing my pick. I still think Mahomes is beat up. Two mobile quarterbacks. One's not going to be as mobile. And with Look Arash's, <laughs> with Arash's tidbit <laughs> on Hertz, Hertz has a bad shoulder, but legs are still good. So, and that defense too. They're going to come after Mahomes as much as I love Mahomes, and I think if there's one guy that can beat Philadelphia, it's him. I, I'm going to stick with Philly. I, I think it's going to be a mucky game, like Arash was saying, and it's going to be in the trenches. And uh, I'll uh, yeah, I'll I'll stick with Philly here, boys. Actually, I have I just, a question for Arash here. On uh, I'm in first place in the I guess it's the playoff survivor pool kind of thing. You mm -hmm. can create a fantasy lineup, and then you can't use that player again. I had saved Mahomes and Hurts, and don't know who to pick. Who do you think, as a quarterback, Ooh. will have the better game when you when you factor in everything? You know, passing yards, rushing yards, because the rushing yards are going to be a big thing. Mahomes isn't going to have many, I don't think. Right? He's hobbling. He's hobbling. Um, here, it's a it's a great question. It's a tough answer because what Mahomes can do is just fling a three yard option out to Kelsey will then rumble 40 yards down the field and it's right. you know, yeah. 40 passing yeah. yards. Mm -hmm. Wouldn't shock me to see Jalen Hurts rush for a touchdown or two. Don't see Patrick Mahomes doing that. Um, I would say deep ball. Um, it, and what it, touchdown touchdowns are obviously worth more in the whole fantasy deal too. Yeah, I think they're worth, you know, the generic fantasy from Yahoo, kind of six points for a touchdown, whether you rush it or throw it kind of thing. So um, so I think yeah, I take hurts, Mahomes, hurts, you know. Okay. Yeah, I think I take Mahomes because Casey's rushing attack. I know Pacheco's become a big part of what they're doing. Clyde Edwards, Alaire may be up this week. But I just think that Kansas City's going to be throwing the football once they get into the red zone, whereas Philadelphia yeah, is going to try so many different things with misdirection. Yeah. I like. All right. uh, I have my home down. I'm Rash's sticking with number. it. Yeah, I'll give yeah. You let's get dialed in here. So you can have a pro <laughs> your your private conversation afterwards. Uh, Sorry, guys. <laughs> he, he, he makes these he makes these calls on the side. It's nine ninety five a minute. Um, <laughs> I'm going to. <laughs> I'm sticking with Philadelphia, although it pains me to take the Eagles. I just think that defense is too good, and I was hoping to use the sack stat to impress Yorkie and Bobby, and then. Uh, a rash ruined it for me. So um, I just like the way the Philadelphia well, that just made my defense really. Yeah. <laughs> Damn it. I should have sent you notes. Don't bring this up. Right. Uh, yeah. 70 sacks is pretty impressive for that, that group. I think they can get to Patrick Mahomes. Yeah, I agree. Alex, I don't think you're wrong. I don't where's think you're my, wrong. where's my graphic, Alex? Oh, oh, wow. oh, Alex. Oh, Alex. Oh, Alex, oh. Oh, Alex is having, he's having a nap. There it is. Yay! 
Where's the Where's the ashes? Valentine's Day graphic for you guys next week with the with the three heads in there. Yeah. Oh, where's yeah. a rash's head? We got to have rashes melon on there too with us. Where's no, that's I couldn't afford to do that, so uh, we just have a rash saying not in the taking, budget. Right? He's taking Philadelphia, <laughs> yeah. So, Bobby's right. the lone guy that's not going back to 500. Um, a rash, thank you for stopping by. I know it's been great busy. to see you, fellas. It's, it's exhausting to cover thank this you, thing, yeah. Like, that's a ton of work you got to do when you're down on the ground, so. Uh, enjoy the rest of uh, Super Bowl weekend and safe travels back home, my friend. I appreciate it. Great to see you guys, and I'll uh, pass along your best to Rihanna. <laughs> Thank Thanks, you. Rash. Thanks. Great Look seeing you, man. Look Great forward to seeing you in the halftime. Enjoy, enjoy the week. <laughs> yeah. See, a Rash would be that guy that would be oh. in the middle of the halftime show. Suddenly, he's on stage. Yeah. That's what I can <laughs> see, Rash. I could see it. I could see good. it. Big, big chain, yeah. big chain around his neck. <laughs> just like some yeah, mixing it up get the high cuts on uh, um absolutely well so we will do some sense chatter and that is they got back on the ice on thursday practice bobby you're the most recent so i'll ask but yorkie feel free to weigh in as right. what is that first day back after having four five days off uh where you've probably enjoyed some sun and some downtime yeah, you're just looking to f sweat the salt out a little bit, <laughs> have some fun. <laughs> um, but you know, it especially because they don't play till I think Saturday, right? So they have you know three yeah. four practices. So, so that first one, you're just I I don't know how long they were out there for, but my guess is, and Yorkie can tell you that your first one back when you have a couple more days, you're just kind of flushing some things out. You're you're trying to be crisp. You're trying to make passes. You're trying to get back into the flow because they know that Thursday and Friday are going to be great ending work days right those are going to be the days that you're back to work so today they're just you know going through the motion we're well, not going through the, that's not the right word they're, they're going through the practice and they're trying to get back to normal yeah no it's it's that's all you're doing you're you're just getting your timing back you're getting your touches in uh tomorrow yeah sorry tomorrow's thursday uh sorry it is thursday today's going to be tomorrow's the friday practice. yeah 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 Thur so they have thursday is going to be the skate thursday yeah, and then yeah, Friday's yeah. their only practice. Then they play. Then yeah, they play. Yeah, yeah. By the way, Saturday afternoon, uh, it's yeah, an afternoon yeah, game against year. Edmonton. So, against which is even like so they've got one practice really. Um, but yeah. here's the question: like, is it that big of uh, a drop off from having just four days off or whatever it is? First, is it, first is it session. Really first session. First, first, you'd be surprised because your body's so accustomed to doing it every day. For the most part, I know the guys get more days off now, yeah. but you just, you four days, yeah. The first day off, you're like, what the hell? What's, what's going on here? I haven't skated in like years. And then halfway through the practice, it comes yeah. back. The end of it, they'll probably have a nice little skate at the end, get the lungs burning. And then all of a sudden you come off the ice and you feel great. And then then, then it yeah. comes back. It doesn't take long. It's just that first initial skate. It's, it's always a little bit weird. It's just because the body hasn't done it. It's people... It's creatures of habit. NHL guys are creatures of habit. Yeah. And if you get out of the routine, the guys just get a little, some guys get screwed up more than others. Uh, some guys don't, but for the most part, it's, uh, it's just a little adjustment, but it doesn't take long. Not at all. all right. uh, because we don't have a show until the next, after the next sense game, we're doing another lock of the day. We're going to do the Edmonton okay. game. Uh, so yeah, we're going to get right back on the horse here. Um, I would like to point out, by the way, brought to you by Botano.ca, that uh, Ottawa, or sorry, Edmonton uh, at Ottawa has done very well of late, but Edmonton is flying. Uh, the betting line's not out just yet, by the way, because it's too early. But Connor McDavid against Ottawa has got 34 points in 20 games, only been held pointless in four games versus the Sens. Um, and at Ottawa, five goals, 16 points in nine games. Um including two four-point games. Leon Dreisaitl's got 29 points in 20 games. Like, they're they're playing pretty well. Ottawa's won four straight, but Edmonton, and by the way, they just won on Tuesday. Uh, they've won five straight road games. So it seems easy to me, but I'm going to let Yorkie, uh, the smartest man in hockey, uh, start this one off. So looking at the standings right now, gentlemen, I see Edmonton in that first wild card position. So they're they're not out of the woods by no means so this is going to be a huge game for them i like the fact that they've already played a game since being back from the break and i like the fact they got the best player in the world and 
potentially the second best player in the world, <laughs> Leon Dreisaitl and the Sens. Uh, they still don't have that back end that I think that can handle two players of that caliber. So they will in time. They will in time. But for Saturday, uh, I'm going with the oil in this one. They're hot on the road, and I think they're going to continue being hot. <laughs> yeah, see, this is where I want to go against you, but I can't time. because I I think it's such a big Gotta deal catch that they me. played a game. <laughs> yeah, well, I but I they've played that game. That game is the big part. But you know, York, you it, it's kind of weird. Sometimes on that first game, you're just running on adrenaline and running on fumes, and everybody's keeping it really simple. So you play this like really easy style of game, and sometimes it works. Um, mm -hmm. And Edmonton, you know, I'm I'm gonna go against you. Just take the Sens at home. I don't know where Edmonton's traveling from. If they're coming in Friday or if they're already in town. Um, but I'm going to I'm going to take the Sens and I th and everything in my gut telling me not to. But I'm going to go against you because I have to make some ground. I have to I have to make some ground up here at some point. Yeah. So the boy the I'm, boys better. I'm be looking. To, I'm looking to where they're I'm looking to where they're coming from here. Yeah. Uh, Detroit. Think, uh, they played. Uh, they uh, won five to yeah. two on Tuesday in Detroit. Oh, okay. So and oh, and you so know what? Every team is due off. for a letdown. Yeah. yeah. You you think that the, you think that? Oh, are they at the market tonight? No, nobody goes to the market Double anymore. Check the market's <laughs> terrible. <laughs> Fair enough. They're, so, they're down oh, at Little Italy. I apologize. Um, <laughs> um, they are playing tomorrow night in Philadelphia. Okay, so they so they're playing so February the games. 9th at Philly. Yeah, yeah. I'm 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 taking. I, <sighs> I'm taking the Oilers. I'm sorry. I got to join Yorkie here. So move my graphic over. <laughs> I, I can't. <laughs> I, don't know if we, I don't know if we can. Oh. There we go. Look it at that. Just Alex the moved it. There he is. <laughs> yeah. yeah. What are you taking, Alex? Alex? Just, Who do you know go? He's just cursing I'll, right now. Yeah. yeah. yeah I'll I make love my it, Bobby. Another day. I'm sorry, guys. Yeah, come on over. Yeah, come yeah. on over. <laughs> <laughs> that two games is huge. Edmonton's playing yeah. well. Uh, yeah. I don't even care that Cam Talbot used to play for the Oilers. So I will I will join you. That's it. I'm going to take it, Edmonton. Listen, we're doing and it for the people, this, not for the yeah, Sens. So it's like, we're going to take an absolute beating on this one, but okay. <laughs> Three and, <laughs> and, and, and Wally, Wally, every, everybody, Wally, everybody thinks you hate the Sens anymore. Anyways, you might as well take the I, That's, I don't. All the, all, all, the people on, all the people on Twitter do, though. <laughs> That's not true. They they just know perhaps that I'm not a big fan of management, some management, <laughs> one management person. Oh geez, all right. Yeah, yeah. Oh, God. Well, I'll let that go. Uh, all right. Oh, save save that for the next <laughs> yeah. one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That was a that was a good show. Um, we got to go to our uh, Montana's gift card winner, by the way. Uh, uh, Fifty dollar gift card, uh, and the winner for this week is. At AMANC2727 on Twitter. Uh, we will be in touch with you to get you your gift card. Congratulations. Um, we appreciate you, uh, all of you, entering. And don't forget, well, don't forget, I didn't tell you yet. Next week, we're giving away a $100 gift card. There is a, a I believe the rules are going to be you have to take a picture at Montana's. But the rules will come out on Monday. Uh, I'm just giving you a heads up. There's a $100 gift card coming uh, next week. So congratulations to at AMANC2727. Um, and don't forget, go to Montana's, uh, check them out by the way, online, if you need to, but Montana's bar, barbecue and bar, uh, all kinds of different things on their comfort menu, uh, including Thursday drink specials. Um, lots of things to enjoy there, by the way, their menu is uh, really good, including the smoky double baked, double beef bake or the buttermilk fried chicken. Um, oh. boys with that in mind, uh, and don't forget the apple crisp at the end, cause you always need to have a little room for dessert. Um, mm -hmm. Enjoy your weekend, and we will <laughs> – see, there it is. Uh, there Alex, it is. Is, he's killing it today. We will uh, we will see you on Monday. <laughs> By the way, uh, Mike McKenna is joining us next week on Tuesday. Uh, we get to talk nice. about perhaps what to do with the Sens goaltending uh, and your former teammate. Maybe he can share – share. see, okay, I was going to ask you if he had a nickname because Mike and McKenna doesn't like – Kenzie, like it doesn't work as a nickname. So what's he got? The Rattler, and I'll let him tell you. I'll let him tell us about it on uh, oh. on Monday or Tuesday. He's oh. right, yeah. But the Rattler, yeah, yeah. yeah. I played with him. Perfect. My one of my first games ever in pro hockey was 15 years ago, and then again with him 14 years later while we were just in the the defunct Sens era. So a lot of good stories with him. He's one of my favorite guys, and I absolutely love him. 
perfect. I look forward to that. Great All right, teaser. boys, enjoy your weekend. Yeah, I'm looking forward to that. Uh, I will see you on Monday. Uh, we should be live at 3 p.m., but we'll settle that later. Uh, see you guys. Take care. Right. <laughs> see you, fellas. See you guys.